Hey guys, what's going on? Steve, I'm back again, and I'm back with another episode of If the Emperor Had a Text-to-Speech Device, Episode 20, You're Green With It. And of course, the video is by Bruva Alphabusa. 20 episodes. Wow. That's like a whole season of Vikings. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's take a look. Nocturne. More specifically, the moon. <laughs> Salamanders. successful oh that chant what is that from I think it's from a game I think I don't remember what Congratulations, my friends. Through the power of friendship, you have found all the artifacts. And now I have returned to bring peace and friendship to the entire Imperium. No matter what the voices in my head say. You are weak, Vulcan. Shut your not face, Spring Ghost Ferris. You are not friend. Ghost! Ghost! Why is it? Why are best for each other? So I take it this one's gonna be about the salamanders. Hello, my lord. Good. My sentient newspaper has Someone's in a cheerful mood today. Hello, my lord. You have any idea where Magnus is? I've lost track of him. You lost track of a 12-foot tall demon man as bright red as a dying star. That is truly a great achievement. <laughs> I know where he is, however. He is busy writing up the first volume of my soon-to-be smash hit book, The Emperor's Guide to the Galaxy, like I asked. Understood. That would be an interesting book. I was book. worried you'd be off sacrificing children or something. Yeah, I've been lying. We have just received a message from the Ultramarines. Let me guess. They actually managed to do it. They found the missing artifacts of Vulcan. Yes. That is thoroughly inconceivable. So the relics that the Salamanders have been trying to track down for millennia were found by the Ultramarines in less than a year. Indeed. I did tell you earlier, my lord, they are pretty great. Almost too great? Actually, not almost, just forthright ridiculously great. I mean, seriously, what exactly makes those baby blue ball busters greater than the Geckoman at being space marines? <laughs> well, my lord, I'm honestly not sure. I do have a few theories, though. One is that the oh boy, let's hear his theories. As proven in their combat techniques, they're skilled at using a wide variety of weaponry and tactics. While the Salamanders are just about as focused on Pyromania as the Sisters of Battle are. Hold up. I must have forgotten, in my infinite wisdom, about some religious order during the Purge of Terra. These sisters of battle yo speak up strike me as not being full of muscle-bound battle buddies with exclusively floppy reproductive organs. What precisely are these sisters? Well, do you remember the lady called Alicia Dominica? The one I brought in here to stop Goge Van Dyer during the Age of Apostasy? My non-existent genitalia are still trembling in uncertainty. Essentially, it's an organization of people like her. They're the military arm of the Adeptus Sororitas, which you yourself talked about during the latest answer session. You know, the ones you sent out your original spinets to. Oh yes, them. That scarcely sounds so grievous after all. Seeing as they eliminated that person with the most evil sounding name I have ups. ever heard, oh God. I am most certain they are sensible and rational people. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sensible and rational, yes, those are words. Perhaps I can use them for destructive purposes. If someone would try to prank call me in the future for unspecified reasons, I will be most happy to hear about them later. Back to the topic. 
any other ideas about why the ultramicroinists are doing the heavier work? Well, my second theory, while it may be subjective, is that I'm fairly sure blue is generally a better color than green. You know how orcs lose most of the time? Maybe there is a connection. First off, that is fucking stupid. Exactly. The fact that gold exists makes every other color. Green is an inferior. awesome color. Second, Just saying. Before you go on complaining about the salamander's scheme, you should see their original paint job. Did Ugh. It did not fly well with the mechanics. Was that actually the original of paint scheme? Seizures the paint job prompted, Ugh. so they went fuck it and slapped a plain coat of green over them instead. Continuing on to my third point, while still speaking about colors, the salamanders generally make your regular civilians and whatnot more worried because they are all black. What? Their skin color is black, my lord. They look very unnatural and quite frightening. That statement would be so damn hysterical if it did not make me cry tears of your disappointment from my skull. What do you mean, my lord? Yo, <laughs> and by extension, most likely the rest of the Imperium have gone back to the ideals of ancient times, when people bounced around and inanely judged each other's characters solely upon the hue of their epidermis. What? What? This is exactly why huh? regular what? humans cannot be left unchecked for a single fucking second before they start blaming and belaming each other. I keep on trying to make humanity function on its own, but it just will not stop. Oh my lord, I think Actually, I am going to act like a brain-dead fucking mortal now to... Oh boy. I have not seen what sort of coloration you have underneath that golden mirror you call a suit of armor in over 10,000 years. Let me see what kind of pigment your corporeal container has, and I will figuratively pour acid salt all over it. Wait, I am so confused, my lord. Why are your eyes lighting up at the same time? Go off away! What the heck are you doing now? Uh oh. <laughs> oh boy. What the fuck? The squeaky sound. My lord, was... Was that really necessary? You're black. But you are shit-talking other blacks. I am confused. Black? No, I'm not. Yes, you fucking are. Have you been in that shimmering shell of yours for so long that you forgot you had something under it? Gold is not a skin color, unfortunately. No, I call it, uh, like, brownish? I don't know, some sand skin color, not black, but salamanders. Brownish? Well, my lord, I mean, uh, you know, the salamanders all have a literally pitch black exterior, with almost coal like skin texture and red glowing eyes. It's like they are bathing in burning promethium on a daily basis. What are you even on about, Goldilocks? I am honestly surprised you don't know about this, my lord. Goldilocks. Your memory must be distorted from all the smooth, lubricated skin you have consistently been exposed to for these past 10,000 years. Your mind has started fantasizing about big, exotic, crust-covered men that come and take you away to the lands of a thousand volcano cannons exploding in your face. That might be true, but it does not affect my argument. Look, you can even see it here. By Terrestis, that is new. I do not remember this being a thing. Is my mind playing tricks on me? Knowing the state of my memory, perhaps I did forget. Now I just feel like some kind of huge thick. I feel like your heart is in the right place, but you can't be blamed for your degraded memory of things. Yes, that is correct. As you know, I you am gotta always come slack, in the you right. know. So, uh, can I have my armor back? I fear the other custodians will come and lubricate my revealed body parts. <laughs> and start patting my chest like muscular bongos and... You are such a fragile little butterflower, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> aren't so, you? Please enlighten me. What did the shaticular showboat actually happen to the salamanders to make them look like this? I am positive at least Vulcan had flesh similar to yours. As bad as my memory is, I should be right about that at least. I mean, I am his fucking father, after all. I'm fairly certain all salamanders, including Vulcan, have always looked like that, my lord. I am murderously sure I, thought I it was gave from the all planet my children they were natural on. human pigments. Why would I ever decide to treat one of my infant sons to a bath in a pit of flaming tar? I am unsure Magnus and Korax are natural pigments. Shut up and explain. Well, uh, I believe their pigment was actually affected over time by the whole world of Nocturne. Their gene seed does a chemical reaction to the radiation upon the planet, which inherently turns all salamanders jet black. Also shifting their eyes to a fiery red. No, that is just fucking stupid. Why would the one chapter that happened to have people of black pigment as a majority end up turning into vituperative fucking caricatures of their past selves? Must be that shit squid cinch again. 
And now to get the blood angels Cupid wings <laughs> and the space wolves, the Ricky faces of pubs, all according to my ever growing scheme. <laughs> blood angels would have Cupid wings. <laughs> Do their appearance really matter if they are still loyal and excel as a chapter? Yes. I mean, no. I mean... Screw this quandary with a fucking jackhammer. Yes. Let I us mean, just talk about no. whatever I we mean, weren't discussing before next the question. storm started flailing about the room. Fair enough, my lord. As I was about to say, another difference between the Ultramarines and the Salamanders are that while the Salamanders follow the Codex Astartes, they also follow a set of their own doctrines exclusive to the chapter. Oh, brilliant. More rules I have not been told about. First off, the Salamanders are very self-reliant and individual for being Astartes. Each Salamander is taught how to repair and improve his own war gear, effectively making them all blacksmiths. No oh, I didn't know that. Thanks to this, the Salamanders have a lot of master That's pretty interesting. Armor in comparison to other Astartes chapters. This is a useful trait to combine with their lace and pyromania. T-O-E-S-T-Y-Y-Y, Hilda. Speaking of which, just to establish <laughs> their tactical prowess, several millennia ago, the Salamanders decided to fill an entire city with Promethean to destroy a dwarf invasion. The good news is that it worked. The fire even ran into all orc spores, stopping any chance of a horde re 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 <laughs> The bad news is, well, they lit a city on fire. Well, that is okay. Also, in the case of Super Heavy Bid, <laughs> well, that's they primarily tend to use okay. the Great Redeemer. Shit it's happens. <laughs> as great as that sounds, it also sounds incredibly unconventional. Not to mention they also literally wear fire on their armor. Time out. Are you earnest in this claim? For fuck's sake, do they have a who can't stay on fire the longest contest as well? Or what? Well, maybe not that. Was an ancient ritual amongst the that would be kind of cool. If battle brothers grows too old, is dishonored, or is crippled and unable to fight, they will undergo a ceremony which involves them walking out into the fiery desert to meet their death in flames. What the fuck? Another one of their customs is that when a salamander actually dies, their body will be cremated in ritualistic fashion in the flames of a giant volcano called Mount Deathfire. Is the Say Space Marine Chapter or a death metal band? If they do not manage Good to question. The Astartes back to Nocturne to be cremated, his battle brothers perform a local cremation ritual in which they light the seas on fire and then all stick their arms into the flames. Now I am starting to feel uncomfortable. But when a captain of the Salamanders dies, a grand ceremony is initiated when they strap the dead captain to a giant slab of ceramite coated marble. Two battle brothers dressed in simple robes then proceed to lower the slab and the captain into a pool of lava. The battle brothers chosen to do this have their own hands scalded with white hot chains that suspended the slab as they lowered it down. They have to do it in perfect unison, as the chains are engraved with the Salamander's iconography, making the Battle Brothers' hands a permanent third degree birth with the semblance of a hammer, an anvil, and a flame upon their hearts. Now this is just becoming fetishistic. Wow. With the death of a captain, a new one has to ascend to the ranks, of course. In the that is crazy. Section, they take the soon to be captain and strip him down to only his sash. He is then branded with a mark on his chest and shoulder as to signify his captainship. Then he is placed upon a platform in his undraped splendor and is subject to an extreme pillar-like inferno launched from below that surrounds him for a few seconds. The ritual is then concluded with the words, Vulcan's fire burns in my breast. With it I shall smite the foes of the Emperor. They are taking that passage pretty damn literally, it seems. Seriously. Is this troubling craving for flames a side effect of me placing them a bit too close to some candles when they were just... Is all that real? Because I mean, that's Why do so many of my sons have such revolting compulsions? Oh my lord, it's not your fault. That is definitely correct. I never do anything wrong ever. <laughs> but well... Anyway... <laughs> yeah, you better change the sudden. You better change the topic there. They are a chapter that, despite their imposing looks, do an outstanding job caring for and protecting civilians, often acting as rearguard in several confrontations. That must go superbly for them, considering their specialization with such short-range weaponry. The population is always grateful for it. One instance was that during the Second War of Armageddon, when all the chapters involved were waging war on all different fronts, the Salamanders picked up the dangerous and neglected task of handling supplies, escorting refugees, and helping the defenseless. In the battles upon the planet of Armageddon, the Salamanders fought for the planet's people and generally frowned upon the notion that the populace of the Imperium were of no worth. These ideals are actually so strongly held by the Salamanders that their chapmaster, Tushan, came blows with the first captain of a chapter known as the Marines Malevolent. The captain had early bombarded Marines the Marines Malevolent? Who were they? Who were they? 
This greatly angered Tushan and made the Marines' malevolent generally seem like total ass clowns. Those Marines' malevolence seem to be suffering from GOG Evandire Syndrome. Seriously, who in their right mind openly names their chapter malevolent? Nobody! The Marines' malevolent don't seem to have anything right about them. Even hmm. their color scheme seems rather obnoxious. It is like they took the salamander's previous color scheme and removed everything Interesting color scheme. good about Yellow and black. I will have to pencil in a virus bombing upon this abomination. On a side note, it is a good thing Yo inserted the cement visualizer into the golden throne. It makes exposition much easier. Agreed, my lord. Either way, I hope you do see how the salamanders are still one of your finest in this regard. They stay true to their Primarch and you in both code and mannerisms. Yes, that is all absolutely fantastic, but there is just one problem. Pyrophilia, my lord? Other than that, at the beginning of this conversation, I actually asked you to provide evidence that the Ultramarines are greater than the Salamanders. Now you have just set them up to be creepy but nice guys with a thing for helping people. <laughs> and fire. Oh. And fire. Well, uh... Found the artifacts before the salamanders? I want to say you are not proving a fucking thing, but I cannot say that without being wrong, and I am of course never wrong as already established. Mm -hmm. Well, my lord, the Ultramarines will most likely live long, eventually fading into legend with their deeds and self publicism. But the salamanders will continue to burn like a mighty flame in the hearts of the people they have defended. It is better to burn out than to fade away. Yes, indeed, my lord. Yes, indeed. Seriously though, next time I meet Vulcan I am going to tell him to take his sons on a field trip to a freezing cold ice planet for a couple of years so they can reorient their fucking perspective. Life's not all fire and flame, am I right my lord? No, especially in the case of the mangy for balls of Fenris. I bet Lee Man and his band of puppies are still sitting about trying to figure out how friction works. Actually, those should tell me about their drunken tirades next. Ah, right, right. Of course, my lord. No! You must not uh -oh. speak of the wolves. Who dares suddenly interject things in my presence? Exactly. Good. Well, look, oh. it is my precious little century bubble. How is my sweetheart doing today? <laughs> Father, your sweetheart was I, Rogel Dor. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. My lord! <gasps> what? Ah! Yes! What is it you want? You didn't hear Dark it. Dark Angels. Not that we were talking about anything. We just like, we like snuggling up close and uh, whispering nice things into each other's ears. I don't know, Israel. Is it the thirteenth time you told me? <laughs> the thirteenth time you told me. Mysterious lead you wished us to follow, and we once again found the lost stray cruiser. Your feet have got. Tempers, tempers, Israel. Did you hear that? <laughs> We're totally gonna find Cipher now. <laughs> <laughs> We're truly gonna find Cypher now. Azriel, there's blood all over the floor now. I, I really don't want to get that on my armor. It's all murky, probably stains easily. Well, we'll soon be making fall upon the planet to which we've been led. That is all. Thank you, dismissed. Oh, remember to close the door, but not too harshly. Yes, Lord Belial. I want to close yes, the door. Yes, Lord Belial. Harshly. <laughs> Did he just. Says mouth meat. Brothers, we're in some deep shit now. If we don't find Cypher, the Inquisition will be after us for sure. They'll start noticing that one of their Inquisitors are missing. Hey, we're not Supreme Grandmaster. We hid the corpse of that stupid Inquisitor in a place where no one will find him. Hacked up his small dried up bits, put him into small packages, and donated his food rations to the death corpse of Creed. Do those <laughs> Creed fellows eat meat? I don't know! <laughs> Uh, Time for this, Asmodai! Cypher and the Fallen are escaping further away from us the longer we linger! We have to- Poor Deathcore. Ah! No, you heard nothing! I mean, yes, you heard something, but it was certainly nothing suspicious and secretly heretical. <laughs> Damn it, what do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you again. 
They've discovered sentient activity upon the planet's surface. What? No! I mean, yes! What is it? It appears to be the Adeptus Mechanicus, my lords. The Adeptus Mechanicus arrived in the planet before us? Oh, this is such a shameful moment. I, I'm totally useless. Nobody loves me. This, this can only be one thing. One terrifying thing. This Mechanicus is working for the Fallen! No. Uh, why the Fallen? Make him repent, as <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> Make him repent. <laughs> My lord, what are the Fallen? Make him repent! <laughs> oh man. What a way to end, what, season, season one? Season two? Oh, I didn't know it was on season two. I thought this was still season one. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was really cool, learning about, um, you know, the salamanders and stuff like that. It was all that, like, um, uh, ritualistic stuff, you know, real, like, that's what they do when... You know, when someone dies, when, like, a captain dies, and how another captain gets promoted, you know, getting branded, and, you know, the, um, the chains and stuff like that. Is that all, is that all real? I'm, I'm assuming it is. I mean, with this, it's kind of like, some stuff is, some stuff probably isn't, so it's kind of hard to tell, but either way, it sounds, um, you know, very interesting, and of course, knowing... You know, obviously the salamanders are, of course, all about fire. And, you know, being... The... The nice space... Well... You know, the space marines that are all about... Um, you know, caring about the civilians and stuff like that. You know, like when we saw in uh, Hell's Reach and stuff like that. You know, they... Um, stayed behind to... I believe it was... Uh, uh, protect the docks, or they were protecting the people. So you know they're always known for for being nice to civilians and stuff like that. So you know that's nothing new. But um, yeah, that was really cool. I like that. And then of course all the extra stuff at the end with the dark angels. That was that was awesome. I do hope we get to see more of that because that was. That was very funny. What? 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 No, we're not talking about anything secret. You know, don't don't worry. You know, just because we like to be huddled close together and 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 whisper in each other's ears doesn't mean we're talking about anything bad. You know, we'll go find Cipher. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that was awesome. I do hope we get to see more Dark Angel stuff. <laughs> uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, anyways, there we go. Episode 20, you're green with it. Very cool. Can't wait to see what happens in um, Season 3. So I look forward to uh, getting started on that. So anyways, other than that, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. That'd be awesome. Remember, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description box below. And other than that, just stick around. More videos are on the way, and I will see you guys next time.